Hi guys, welcome back uh, to this next question in our walkthrough of the BCS Business Analysis uh, Requirements Engineering uh, sample paper, or well, the first one that we're going through. And in this uh, session, we're going to cover question five this time. So let's read through the question and see what we can identify. So it says here that we have uh, Ethan, Emma and Jitesh. And they are all members of a team that aim to produce a new expenses approval system for their organization. Ethan has applied his expert knowledge of human resources to suggest some potential adjustments to the requirement set to make the project more effective. He has agreed to take these ideas back to his HR teams to confirm them. Once the requirements are confirmed, they will go to Jitesh for sign off. The whole team made up of the project team and business representatives, have been discussing a potential issue regarding implementation dates. Emma has agreed to schedule some time with Jitesh to, pro to propose and agree with him her detailed plan for the corrective action to minimize any deviation from the plan. So, based on the scenario above, insert the name of each individual into the correct role below. Okay. So what we have is we have this situation here. This is uh, this scenario is describing um, you know something that could really potentially happen um, within the context of uh, carrying out a re requirements engineering assignment, because we have these three stakeholders here, and they're all sort of working towards um, this. They're working on this project and building this particular um, system or helping to build the system. So. We, we need to know that there are various roles and responsibilities that people need to take on in projects. And uh, this is also um, the case for requirements too. So because requirements are also involved with projects, we need to know what these people do in the projects and how they relate to requirements engineering too. Because requirements are really at the heart of the project. It's the um, ultimate features of the system at which, which um, drives the development of the system. So we can see here in this context it's saying that Ethan has applied his expert knowledge of human resources to suggest some potential adjustments to the requirement set. Okay, so it's in this particular instance here that which is describing contextually what could really help. Um, and with these particular stakeholders, we often have a subject matter expert. So someone who we can actually, that, that really knows about a particular subject. Let's say it's, uh, well, within this particular context, this, the system that's being um, built needs to have this expert knowledge of human resources. Therefore, Ethan is the expert in this field, and he's the one that actually needs to um, review these requirements and maybe make some adjustments so that the, when the system is built, it's built and aligned to the business's objectives. So it's built it's aligned to uh, what really needs to be done in terms of a solution for the business. So Ethan is going to be using his expert knowledge. So in context, this is a role that is often involved in requirements engineering. We need these subject matter experts. And um, often this is these, these roles come into play when there is that aspect of the, the requirements engineering framework, which is requirements validation. Because in, often in re requirements validation, we need uh, people to review the requirements that have been produced by us as a business analyst, and they need to do various things. And sometimes what we'll do is we'll create this review group. So there are these particular stakeholders that, need to, that all need to review this, this uh, set of requirements to really define that this is what needs to be done, or this is what needs to be built into the system. And only once they're all happy and they, they've all said that this set of requirements is great, then the sponsor will often sign off that document. So he has the ultimate authority, the ultimate say, to say that, okay, we've all gone through it now, and I'm actually um, closing this process down, or well, this, this requirements elicitation, analysis, and, and documentation, and, and now we have validated the requirements, and here we're going to now sign it off. We're going to close off this document, this, this stage of the process, and we're now going to baseline the document. And baselining is something that you need to know because often documents will get locked in, they'll get baselined so that nobody can make changes unless there's this formal change process that takes place. Um, 
And a lot of this is done in the um, requirements validation stage of requirements engineering. So in these review groups, we have these various roles that need to look at the requirements from a specific perspective. Okay, so in this context, we, we've now identified that Ethan is an expert. He has expert knowledge. So therefore, he would be the sub subject matter expert, the SME. That's one of the roles that you need to know um, when it comes to um, the various stakeholders that may be involved with requirements. Okay, then if we continue on from here, we can see that it says that, um, so this, so Ethan has agreed to take these ideas back to his HR teams to confirm them. Okay, so there's that aspect of confirmation coming in there, but he's going to um, carry out some validation by taking those back to his team and ensuring that everything um, that is going to be built into the system is going to be what they really want. Okay, so we have, uh, once the, these requirements are confirmed, so this is the scenario continuing on here, the story of requirements. Um, so they will go to Jitesh for sign off. So this is what we've been discussing. It's one of those other roles that needs to be in this review group and they need to sign off the requirements. As all of the requirements have been validated, they now at the end of this process, they need to be signed off. And this is usually done by some high level uh, person in the organization, some high level business representative, such as an executive. And usually these, um, these people within a project context are, are given the role of the sponsor. And the sponsor is the person who ultimately commissions the project. They are often the person that initiates this whole uh, process of development. They, they're the one that wants it and they have this authority and responsibility over the whole project. So they would then look at that requirements document and they've been given all the information and everyone's reviewed it and they're now going to say, do you know what, this is ready to go into development. I'm going to sign it off. I'm going to baseline it. This is done by the role of the sponsor. Okay. So we then, um, it then says here, so we've now identified that J Jitesh is the project sponsor in this context. And then it says the whole team made up of the project team and business representatives have been discussing a potential issue regarding implementation dates. So maybe this has been happening while the, um, the while Ethan, the expert is now, he's already um, confirmed these requirements with his team and now the sponsor is now ready to sign it off. But now all of a sudden the whole team have decided that there might be an issue now. There's something going on with, with, with uh, implementation dates. So now we have another stakeholder here. There's a name there, Emma. She's agreed to schedule some time with Jitesh to propose and agree with him her detailed plan for the corrective action to minimize any deviation from the plan. So all of these keywords here are indicating that Emma is the project manager. And this is another role that is really involved in um, projects and uh, bringing requirements into now from this, this stage of, of planning and gathering the requirements into this project where the actual project gets created and the requirements get developed um, from there on out. And you need the project manager who will oversee everything and ensure that everything is planned effectively. They'll be scheduling uh, certain activities to ensure that maybe requirements get delivered on at a certain time. They get delivered to the correct people and all these other activities take place in development and such. Um, maybe even managing that uh, Jitesh actually signed off that particular document. They're managing all of the timekeeping and the, and, and the, the project itself. So um, we, Emma is the project manager in this context. She's, she's planning. She's, um, you know, she's, she's looking at, at scheduling. It's, re it's regarding implementation dates. So this is when this particular a system is going to be implemented into the business after it's been developed. So this, they would be much more involved during those later stages rather than at these earlier stages, these project managers. So it says here in the instructions, it says based on the scenario above, insert the name of each individual in the correct role below. So we have uh, four options here and we need to decide whether Jitesh, Emma or Ethan are the subject matter, matter expert, the project manager, and the project sponsor. And from what we've discussed here already, um, we know that Ethan is the subject matter expert, Emma is the project manager, 
and Jatesh is the project sponsor. Okay, so um, these are just a few of the roles that are now being mentioned here in uh, that are associated with requirements engineering. But uh, just be aware that there may be one or two other roles that you may be uh, tested on. So, um, and also remember that this validation part of the requirements engineering framework, these, these roles are often involved at the stage to, that we, we as a business analyst or, or a system analyst or requirements engineer, we've now handed over these requirements after we've elicited them. And now these, um, these people have to, within the review group, they have to now validate these requirements and confirm them that they're correct, clear, and, un and unambiguous. Okay, so this is part of the validation stage of requirements engineering. And they all need to agree that these requirements will cover the features of the system, the, 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 um, the correct features of the system, and will benefit the business in, in terms of how it really wants to. And will be aligned to the business objectives and the strategy. This is something that the project, uh, project sponsor also has the responsibility of. He needs to um, establish that this, these requirements and this, that all define these requirements uh, in, um, as in a whole, define this new system that's going to be built. And within all of these meetings, this project sponsor now knows and understands what the system is going to look like, what's it going to do, and he's going to have all types of um, models and, and all these visualizations and maybe even a prototypes for him to understand what the, the, the new system is going to look like and what it's going to do. And it's his responsibility to ensure that it's going to carry out um, the, 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 it's going to fulfill the objectives of the business and what, and the reason why it was actually defined in the first place too. And this is now starting to link a little bit in with bu the business case, which is also an aspect of business analysis that, um, that needs to be done. Okay, so um, so uh, option B here is the correct answer. And I uh, hope that you go and cover all those roles and uh, responsibilities. There is um, a module in your course, which is called Collaborate and Communicate with Stakeholders uh, to clarify requirements. I think it's mo module five, and you can go look at your syllabus and you can look at what you really need to um, learn from this particular module and you can um, go and cover those areas so ensure that you can describe the responsibilities of the actors those stakeholder roles in requirements engineering and know that there are these multiple stakeholder uh, roles can exist in a project and they interface and they can interface with the requirements throughout the project and um, and as in this context of requirements validation here um, when we need these different roles in a review group. So they're looking at these requirements after they've been elicited. But they'll each have their own responsibilities in terms of what they need to do in this context. So I hope you've now got a little bit of more insight into requirements validation and those stakeholder roles and how they collaborate and how they, they work with requirements. So um, just ensure that you cover those areas in your course because you may get a question such as this one. And that's the end of this question, uh, this question review. So I will see you in the next question.